Hey everyone, today I'm here with my last Namibian adventure video, if you missed the previous two. I'm gonna have it linked up in the cards and down below in the description box. But yeah, today I'm finishing off this series and I'm actually gonna talk about my experience visiting the cheetahs and my safari at the Etosha National Park. Because Etosha came the last on our trip, I still have the cheetahs to cover, so I'm gonna start with the cheetahs. Uh, we visited a farm, which it's not really the word I would use because it's more of like a rescue organization. In case you didn't know, cheetahs are endangered. In 1900, there used to be 100,000 cheetahs. Today, there's only 8,000 due to habitat loss. A lot of people also practice illegal wildlife trade. And the third reason why the numbers are dropping this quickly is in Namibia, a lot of farmers kill cheetahs because they present a threat to the livestock. But yeah, there's a few organizations that are trying to help and what they do is they take the hurt cheetahs in and and, you know try to not get them all killed off basically and we have visited one of the families who do that they have this massive land enclosed land which we were driving through the land for like an hour um, and I didn't really see where it ends so it's not like they keep them in cages and yeah they basically live their lives there as if they would uh, if they're still living in the wild the only difference is that they are being fed because obviously there's no food for them in the enclosed space a family who has this farm they basically breed goats there for the cheetahs hashtag the circle of life they go around the area every single day to feed them and when we arrived we actually joined them we jumped on the back of a pickup truck and the owner drove us around while he was feeding the cheetahs which meant that we got to see them up real close and he does throw the meat to them so you know you can like see them like jump trying to catch it it was very fascinating to watch and to be that close to a wild animal the first thing that everyone asks me is like how the hell were you brave enough to be so close to them like i know they're being fed but they're still wild animals and you were on the pickup truck like unprotected like they could jump onto the pickup truck like yeah of course they could but cheetahs don't actually attack people cheetahs apparently think that humans are too big they basically think that they wouldn't be successful successful at their attack so they leave humans alone that's one fact i've learned that i didn't know before so you can be kind of chill around cheetahs we actually also visited the owner's house backyard i guess and we got even more up close and personal with the cheetahs because they were actually right next to us like walking around us i had one rubbing against me all the time another one was like licking my fellow traveler and the difference with the cheetahs that were at the house and the ones that were in that massive enclosure was that the cheetahs that are living at his house were found as babies and were raised by humans so they do actually behave completely like domestic cats in the past you could like also pet them but apparently the namibian government has prohibited that a couple of years ago so you're not allowed to touch them anymore but they can touch you if they want to so if they touch you it's fine we we're also there during their feeding time they didn't have food thrown to them like the wild cheetahs they got fed like dogs slash cats which i thought was really funny and then our last adventure of the trip was etosha national park where we went on a safari i didn't know what to expect and i guess every safari is a little bit different but in etosha national park you basically have a few different campsites they are obviously enclosed you are behind the fence because of all the wild animals around you and let me tell you there's a lot of them so the camp is actually open from like 
sunrise to before sunset. During the night, you can't enter or exit the camp. It is completely closed off. There's a few designated roads you can drive on. The best way is to just drive around slowly, keep your eyes on the prize, you know, if you spot any animals. But the best thing to do is to get from one water hole to another because at the water holes is where the magic happens. It's where the animals usually go to drink. So if you just stay at a water hole, sooner or later you'll see some animals, mostly zebras, um, giraffes, elephants, antelopes, rhinos, like you get the whole shebang. When we arrived there we actually first went to check in, we had to go to another one to do that, that and then we went to our camp. Each camp also has some seats, like some benches. There's basically a water hole right next to every camp and you can just chill there, watch what's going on at the water hole. So if you don't wanna drive around all day long with a car, you can also just chill at the camp and you know, just go to that single water hole to have a look. Though I would definitely not recommend you to do that because the water holes that aren't right next to the camps are a lot more fun. There's a lot more activity going on. But yeah, each camp also has like a restaurant and a pool and a little shop and obviously toilets and running water and everything. Lost my train of thought. But I wanted to say that we checked in, went to the water hole, then went to our actual camp to set up our tents. And I know I've been talking about setting up our tents for the past three videos, like <laughs> all the time. So today I thought I might as well show you how setting up a tent looked like. That was my home, but to be honest, we spent all day outside in cars, just driving around, trying to see animals and photographing them. When you go on a safari, you never really know what you're gonna see because it's kind of based on pure luck. And I didn't want to get my hopes up, but what I did want to see is a lion because I'm obsessed with the Lion King. And this is also the second reason why I really, apart from the Himbas, why I really wanted to go to Namibia or to Africa in general. So yeah, lion was on the top of my to-do list, but it wasn't really keeping my hopes up. However, we saw literally everything there was to see elephants and there was actually a lot of elephants so you can watch elephants all day long if you want to one memory that stayed with me is when they went to drink and they bathed themselves and then they walked away and they started throwing sand on themselves that was really cool to watch giraffes oh my god the giraffes were absolutely hilarious when they drank water because they like kneel down and they look so clumsy doing it it looks like they're gonna fall with those like tiny long legs zebras are just gorgeous lots of antelopes different antelopes we saw hyenas as well one of them was so freaking adorable i know they say hyenas are like ugly and i do agree some are really ugly also really loud because when i was sleeping i kept hearing them in the night time which was really creepy but yeah what of them that we saw i think it was like a baby like a very young hyena oh my god such an adorable little face <laughs> but yeah there was like lots of gnus as well which are these wild cows i call them i know i'm talking about the animals but we also saw a few scent tornadoes which were fascinating and of course we saw the lions we actually saw them on day two. We are going to Atosha National Park. Message me because I can tell you where exactly they are because I think they always keep around that area. We saw them on the second day. The lion and like three females. They were just chilling there on the rocks and we actually waited for them and they ended up crossing the road and walked up this tree. On the third day, actually a lot of people decided to just stay at the camp and chill because honestly driving around all day long is exhausting, we're all tired. But our car, we decided to do one more day of safari, not one day, we did half a day. We decided to go to the lion's spot first thing in the morning and there they were again. There was like a gnu 
that I don't know what he was doing, but he separated from the group, silly boy, and they actually wanted to attack him. So we saw how they were like planning and coordinating the attack, which was also very fascinating to see. They didn't end up doing it because the GNU got away. But yeah, they were all kind of chilling there at the same spot. So we we're hoping that they're gonna cross again and go towards that tree. And fortunately, they went into another direction. There wasn't any road um, by that area. So we didn't get to see those up close. But there was one older lioness that crossed the road and went up to that very same tree again. So I saw that one up close as well. What's not so cool though was something that happened on our third day before we got to the alliance. We had a bit of a morning rush of adrenaline, I guess. So we're driving to get to the lion's spot and while we're driving, we spotted a rhino that was very close to the road. So as you do on a safari, you stop and you take photos. So we stopped, took some photos of the rhino, this one, and I guess the rhino then decided he didn't really like us. So he started running towards our car. Thank God. <laughs> The girl who was driving was like quick enough to turn on the car because we turned it off to like not disturb the animals. He quickly turned on the car, quickly started driving and it was this close. I am not overreacting. It was this close and the rhino would got us because he kept running after our car. But yeah, we managed to escape him. After he was like far away, we like stopped and we all burst into a laugh. <laughs> you know, one of those nervous laughs because <laughs> we were so shocked. We didn't know whether to cry or laugh because it was terrifying, but it was also funny. <laughs> That's honestly a story to tell. I'll never forget that experience. Things like that only happen to me, guys. I don't want to think what would happen if he actually got us because... The rhinos are massive and very strong. There would definitely be a big dent in the car, but we would also quite possibly be on like the roof. It could go very bad. It's definitely a reminder that you're still out in the wild and you have to keep your distance. We did follow all the rules and all that, so we didn't really do anything wrong, but you know, you see that you never know what can happen to you. One rule of the park though is to not get out of the car. Now that I told you the story, you will understand why. Oh, another funny story. On our fourth day, just as when we were leaving the park, back to Windhoek to catch our flight home, when we're still in the park, we actually saw a leopard. That was crazy because leopards are really, really, really hard to spot. But yeah, we saw one and it wasn't even like chilling on a tree or anything. It was just there right by the side of the road. I don't know. I'm really lucky when it comes to leopards. I managed to spot it both in Namibia as well as in Sri Lanka. It was like the last animal on our list in Namibia that we didn't check off yet and we did it right when we were leaving the park. However, what happened five minutes later wasn't really fun because... <laughs> We blew our tire. When you blow your tire in Atosha, there's nothing much you can do. I know like there's a rule you're not allowed to leave the car, but if your tire blows, you have to leave a car and you have to change it. It's just really not ideal when that happens five minutes after you just saw a leopard. And yeah, when we're changing the tire, the rangers uh, who are constantly driving um, around the park also drove by and they were like, um, yeah, just, you know, watch out because there's like a group of lions like just around the corner. So maybe just be careful a little bit. <laughs> well, great. It would be better if you didn't tell me that. <laughs> we were especially unlucky because while we were changing our tire, I don't know what happened, but our car fell down and it blew our like second tire that we were putting on. So we had two tires that basically exploded. Luckily, there was three of us, like three cars that were like traveling together. So the guys behind us, they lent us their spare tire so we could change it. Um, that's why when you're going to Namibia, if you're like going in a self-organized tour, I would always say just make sure there's at least two cars in your group because I personally wouldn't feel the most safe driving around by myself. Things can go wrong and you need people around to help you out. Anyway, yeah, that was my Atosha adventure. 
I didn't really take a lot of videos because I was mostly taking photos that I am publishing on my Instagram. So follow me there if you aren't following me there. I really hope you enjoyed my Namibia videos. They were a little bit different from my usual travel vlogs, but hopefully it was like a great way to kind of take you with me on a trip as well as give you some extra information. Do tell me below in a comment if you enjoy this little series. Give it a thumbs up if you did and do subscribe to my channel because there is more travel content coming your way very soon. In August, I'm actually heading to Asia on another adventure. I'll be visiting three countries in two weeks. I'm super excited about it. I can't wait to tell you about it more. But until then, like I said, subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys soon. Bye! About to leave, already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking